Welcome to the Guthrie America podcast. We sit down with the amazing people who do life in our community and who are from here. I'm your host, Hedy Coleman. Today, I'm sitting down with Preston Williams. Before we jump into this with Preston, I want to thank our sponsor, Kevin Kraft and his team at State Farm. He and his team take great care of my family uh, with our life insurance, car insurance, and the home insurance. Also, will you please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on YouTube and then wherever else you find it, Apple, all the goodness. Uh, it would mean a world to me. Preston, how you living, man? Man, I'm blessed, bro. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, of course, you and I go way back. Come on. So uh, I know a little bit of your story, but we're going to yeah. try to do the best we can to capture uh, some of your story within the next 30 minutes or so. Yep. Uh, but tell us about your family. Man, so I have, first off, shout out to my beautiful wife, Dominique Williams. And together we have seven children with one on the way. Um, Pray for them, Lord. <laughs> Come on. <Yeah. laughs> so we have four daughters and three girls. I believe, me personally, believe that this next baby is a girl, too. So these dreads that y'all see right here, I don't know if I will have them <laughs> about time, uh, you know, this baby, this baby get here. Um, but uh, no, nah, man. So our oldest daughter is Anastasia. She is 14. After that, we have Jaden. He's 14. Um, then you have Preston. He's 13. Then you have Emery. She is 13. Lyric just turned 11 on January 14th. Um, Avery is seven, and then we have the the young princess of the house, Amora, and she is three. Now I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but you know I'm pretty vocal. Yeah. You got a favorite child? Hmm. See, ladies and gentlemen, see how I knew he was gonna try to act like he don't. I know he got one. <laughs> Who's your favorite child? Go there. I'm gonna always go with the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> A more. So, so a more is about to get booted. Yeah. So when that next baby get here, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be the next baby. <laughs> so I guess that's a fair way to do it because then everybody has had their chance yes. of being a favorite child. Yes. And so whoever the last one gets blessed even more, is that what you're saying? Because they get to hold it for the for the entirety. I mean, they're gonna get the most attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like that's just naturally how it happens. I love people with big families. My mom comes from a big family, and essentially I feel like I was a part of that big family. I was the oldest grandchild. Yeah. But tell us one of the things that you feel like people don't really get from having a big family. Man, I you you know, a lot of people, they think about finances. Um, a lot of people think about um, feeding a big family like this. Uh, for me, <clears throat> it was same, I came from a big family. Um, it's, it's three of us that my mom had, um, but my dad also has, uh, three children as well. So it's six of us all together. But not only that, my mom took in, you know, um, some of my cousins and stuff like that. And I don't look at them as cousins. I look at them as my siblings as well. And so it's like, when I watched my mom, you know, she, she did what was necessary. But long story short, like, I think people think about all the wrong things. They look at, you know, how the world is turning and all that stuff and saying how is it possible for this. But, man, truly, truth be told, it's not as hard or as bad as people think. The love that comes from each individual um, will make you forget about yeah. um, struggles, you know. But not only that, the Lord will always provide when it comes to things like that. Yeah. No, that, that's so true. I think, I think a couple of things. Growing up in a big family, there was never a boring Come moment. On. No, there's always it's it. I don't want to use the word drama like it's, a, it's in a way if it's a bad thing, but there was always drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? it's just a, always it's almost Something like a always movie. Always getting broken in the house, <laughs> pointing fingers at each other. It was them, you know, and then laughing because you know you got away with it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so you always got the drama. But here's another mm -hmm. thing: talking about you know the Lord will provide. It's so true. Yeah, like. My grandparents had 13 children, and then I came along. Sometimes people think I'm the 14th child. Yeah. Uh, but we were always taking – I didn't know we were – I didn't know that we were growing without until maybe I got older. Yeah. Right? And be like, oh, yeah. no, we didn't have that. I didn't know that was such a – like, there's still today people talk about something. I'm like, yeah. no, I didn't even know that was a thing, man. When you got 14 people in the house. Yeah. 
Yeah. 16, 15 people plus our friends. I was just about to say, my mom was like that too. Yeah, yeah. man, plus our friends. And so there was times, and we grew up in a three-bedroom house. Man. So uh, the living room became the, four, the fourth bedroom. Mm-hmm. So you'd have people spread out, man, all over the place. So, I mean, I guess when people started coming to stay the night at y'all's house, you just, the yeah, numbers same. started getting up there. Yeah, same. You know, um, right now our living situation is is not as welcoming, you know. Yeah. Um, but but still, you know, it, it, I, yeah, it's the same way. Um, even when I go back to my childhood, um, when you talk about the, the front room and stuff being overloaded and stuff like that, man, I, I can remember all of that. And I just, um, like you said, when it comes to the big families, um, I think some people, some people, like Dominique, for instance, Dominique, uh, my wife, she is the the youngest out of four. So she has three older brothers, um, but they're all, the youngest brother is 10 years older than her. So she almost grew up like by herself and plus she's the only girl. Oh, yeah. So she always said that she wanted a bigger family um, because she wished that she had those siblings around her and stuff like that. And, you know, um, seeing her embrace that, it's, it's, you never, you really don't get people that didn't grow up in a big family like that saying they want a big family yeah. like that, you know. And, and she says the same thing. Like, she wished she had more of that camaraderie and more of that, um, that feel, you know, uh-huh. the big family feel. And so... Um, I could tell you, you are missing out, you know, when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, man, I see I can stay on this big family. We The whole podcast episode will be about big families. Hey. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of knowledge <laughs> dropping in. Yeah. Uh, big families. But, man, t- tell us, uh, let's just kind of go back to you. Tell me how your friends and family, the people who know you the best, how would they describe Preston? Man, you probably won't believe this, man, but I've been called a butthole my whole whole entire <laughs> life growing up. <laughs> By my mama, my sister, and my wife. <laughs> man, you now you gotta you gotta unpack that a little bit. You just can't leave that. Like why they call you that, man? I just had to let that sit for a little bit because I know people probably won't believe it, man. But so I like to joke a lot. Uh I like to prank a lot. Uh, so it's like the the family side they get a they get a different 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 precedent. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, when, so for instance, like I, I joke I joke so much when I first started working for uh, DOT Department of Transportation. Uh, I was out working cutting trees. Uh, it was my second day of learning how to cut trees. Um, I notched one off. And when I went to finish it, it rotated, came down, and snapped my leg in two. And uh, my tibia bone, my left leg, and snapped it in two. And so I'm on my way to the hospital, and I called Dominique. I'm like, hey, I'm on my way to the hospital. She's like, yeah, right. Just like that. I said, babe, I'm really on my way to the hospital. She said, what happened if you're on your way to the hospital? <laughs> I said, I broke my leg. She said, bye, Preston. Just like that. <laughs> she hung up. I had to call no her. No way. Yeah, she hung up. Did you? And she yeah. hung up on you. I hung up. I had to call her back on Facetime, and then I show. I, I put my boss on the phone, and then he said he broke his leg. She said what? <laughs> oh, attitude changed after that. That's, see, that's the thing about people who joke a lot. Yeah, because I'm a joke. So yeah, I mean, I joke when we, sometimes we probably should stay serious, yeah. right? I yeah. can trans. So yeah. then people don't know. Yeah, how to take you serious yeah. or not, and so. Yeah, man, that's so I, funny. I, I had to, I had to kind of change, change that. I don't joke as much as I used to because of stuff like that. I'm like, man, so if I was really saying, Dominique, I'm shot. I'm driving to the hospital. She gonna hang up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that taught you your lesson. That's what you said. Let, like, let me bleed out, not, not to ask where you at, or none of that, you know? So I definitely had to uh, switch that up for real. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. So um, I know, I know that you grew up in Guthrie. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll say Guthrie is the place that you spent the most time in your life. Mm-hmm. Is that is that fair to say, yeah. kind of? As it's a home, child for growing sure. up, yeah. It's home. Um, but also, you've kind of bounced around, man. Yeah. Tell us, kind of, like, small town. You've lived in big cities, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like, tell us the some of the things that makes you appreciate Guthrie 
um, when you have lived in other places, right? Yeah. Um, now, there's probably some things you like. <laughs> you move to other places, but like, Guthrie needs this. Yeah. But what are some things yeah. that, you know, like, you like, no, I, I've learned to appreciate this about Guthrie from bouncing around. So, when we came back from Vegas, uh, it was really a culture shock. Wait, before you before you say that, uh-huh. tell, like, let people know so they'll know how many different places oh, you've different, been. Oh, different, okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So, when we was about second grade, uh, I, at the end of my second grade year, we moved to Chicago. Yeah, uh, my mom, her husband is uh, from Chicago. Um, he went to Langston. That's how they met. Um, and so we moved to Chicago. We were there for two and a half years. Then we moved back home. Um, and then, like briefly, uh, for their job, they had to go to Dayton, Ohio. So we was out there for a few months. And then we moved back home, and that's skipping years down the line. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and then, um, and then I finished my school year. My school year out here, graduated here in two thousand eight. Um, the greatest class of of Guthrie. Come on, oh eight. Let's keep you know, moving. Shout Let's out, keep moving. Oh eighters. Let's keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. So then I met my wife um, in oh nine. Well, we we went down to Bakersfield, California, for a family reunion. So my granddad's siblings and uh, stepmother and all that stuff, they were out. They they were all from here, but they moved uh, to California, um, like in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then, so we was out there to see them and all that stuff. So my mother-in-law and my auntie, they went to school together. Um, I get introduced to my wife out there. So long story short, I'm just giving y'all a background of how I even went to the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. You know, so my wife is from Bakersfield. Um, she moved here. Um, I ended up losing my job in 2011, or no, 2012. And then we decided to move back to our hometown in Bakersfield, California. We were there for probably roughly around 10 months to a year. Um, then we moved to Las Vegas. Gotcha. And we was there for four and a half years. Then you, yeah. Yeah, that was the longest you've probably, yeah. probably been away, right? And I didn't come home, man. So, like, when I when we did move back, it was a culture shock because for all those years, I just was around big, big city Vegas, yeah. you know, and I got I became accustomed uh, to the ways of the fast life and the busyness, you know, of how people don't say hi, you know, um, they don't hold doors open, Um they just don't care, you know. So it's like you mind your business, I mind mine, and yeah. that's how everything was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now going to a little bit of what you kind of learned to appreciate about, and I hear a little bit out of that. But yeah, yeah, man. So when we first, I'll never forget when we first we, we moved back here in 2016. I think it was like September, September or November, one of the two. When we first moved back, and as we was driving back in to Oklahoma. I'm looking at all the cows. I'm looking at all the the barbed wire fences. I'm looking at fields, and I'm like, oh my gosh! Like we really moving back home, you know? That's what tripped me out after all those years seeing uh, casinos and seeing you know big screens and taxis and man, just the whole nine, just bodies of people walking here and there. Now, I will say off the strip of Las Vegas, it's beautiful, man. Um, depending on what side of town you live on. Um, it's it's really beautiful out there. A lot of people say ain't nothing out there but the strip, but that's that's not true. Entertainment wise, yes. But there are areas where you can grow your family out. Um uh, Henderson is a beautiful place outside of Las Vegas. Um, when I, I did security while I was out there, so Henderson was an area where I worked at, and then Summerlin was a, a gorgeous spot. Like, I mean, which was slower pace, you know, which would be like your Oklahoma City and your Edmond type stuff, you know, out there. Um, but, yeah, when I got back, the slower pay, pace of things, um, not as many people running red lights. Um, taxi drivers will literally run you over and not care when you're walking through the median yeah. uh, or the intersection. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, man. Um, not sitting in the DMV line for six hours <laughs> to, to to update your license. Yeah, like yeah. you come back home, you in and out like yeah. within the 30 minutes. Not even that long half of the time. So it's like it was just a whole lot of stuff that I, when I got home, I had to really sit for 
for the rest of 2016, to be honest, for me to really appreciate, because I was a little upset when we had to move back at first, to be honest, you know. Um, but I, I'm so grateful, man, um, that I'm back home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as you settle in, kind of start yeah. reacclimating yourself. Because yeah. now, you, you know, you're talking about living out on some land, yeah. Yeah. you know, digging it up yeah. and, yeah. you know, gardening and all yeah. that stuff is yeah, what man. I hear from you. Like, it don't feel like Vegas kind of nah, stuff I bro. heard from you right now. Nah. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, when I came back home, I really, like, around 2017, 18, man, is when I really was like, dude, I was tripping. Yeah. Like, how how do you not want to be, you know, in this type of environment? Yeah. Um, people that don't come from it, they don't know how to appreciate it. But yeah. whenever you come from it and you leave and you come back, you, you gain, you know, an appreciation of, of what exactly is made available to you, you yeah. know? Yeah, for sure. No, that's good. Um, man, I think an important thing that I don't want to miss out on, because Got Through America, the podcast is, you know, yeah, we're talking about, uh, Guthrie mm -hmm. to a certain degree, but it's about the people. Yes. And um, one of the things that I know about you is your faith is huge. Yes. Uh, you've had a life changing experience uh, out of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Man, give us the. I know it's a it's a big story. Yeah. But give us the short mm -hmm. synopsis on just um, um, your faith being a priority in your life. Yes. So, <clears throat> man. Um, I'll just say this, like whenever grow, growing up in church, you know, we were raised to know Jesus, you know, um, but when you have culture um, around you and, and culture is more of what you lean on, you kind of grow up outside of, you know, um, you grow up more learning about the culture than church itself. So when I grew up, I grew up learning more about the culture with Jesus inside the culture. Um, so I lived for the culture more than I lived for Jesus. I just put it like that. Um, and then in Vegas, one thing that I do know, just to backtrack a little bit, I know that whenever we left to go to California and from California to Vegas, that was, that was God pursuing me. Because before we left, I asked the Lord. I was I was in the season to where I was lightweight, becoming depressed. Um, my hours was getting cut at work and things of that nature. Eventually, I lost my job. Um, and I just remember asking God, like, if you real, show me. If you real, show me. Um, and I remember feeling his presence sweep through the room. Um, not to be funny or nothing, but I was high at the time, and it freaked me out. So I was like, bro, I ain't smoking this no more. <laughs> You know, and I really kind of put it to the side and, and just um, left. I, re I was so freaked out I left the room, you know, and just. But <clears throat> when I put all the pieces together back then, I was like, that was God really taking me away from what I knew on this journey to get to know him. Because like I said, I knew of Jesus, but I knew more of the culture. You know, churches tend to create a culture instead of um, – um, a model after Jesus, you know? Um, and so, <clears throat> yeah, in Las Vegas, man, I ended up um, having this experience with Jesus. Um, and he knew what I needed because in that time, I was able to see um, a lot of young adults. I was like 23, 24 at the time. And I was able to see a lot of young adults who was not pursuing the busyness and the fun lifestyle and the sinful nature of Las Vegas but they were set apart and really investing in one another, um, being at church. Or if they were on the strip, they were meeting up, you know, at buffets and stuff like that, breaking bread with one another. You know, they wasn't about getting out, getting lost in Las Vegas, man. So that taught me a whole lot to where it's like, okay, like I've, I've always seen both, you know, we were able to do both. But I'm looking at these young adults, not older people, people my age and some were younger, be dedicated to living a life that is solely about Christ and Christ alone. Yeah. And so that's that's where my faith grew from. After I, I was rebaptized and rededicated, um, I was around them and 
And that really did something to me to to show, like, when he says, you know, either be hot or cold, you yeah. know, the lukewarm he spit out. Um, and I was able to gain and process those type of scriptures when he told us to pick a side, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's where the growth in my faith have, has come from. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. I, I love. I'm. I'm still processing that whole. Uh, how you said the culture, uh, kind of impacted how people did Jesus. Like, how, yeah, how did like you... they like. So it's the culture, and then people take Jesus and trickle it inside of that culture. Yeah. So it's not. It's not a lifestyle of Christ. It's still a lifestyle of our culture. Yeah. But we mentioned Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. Jesus needs to be the one impacting the culture. Right. Like our culture changes based on what Jesus yes. wants for us. So yeah. A culture of loving one another. Come on, man. Yeah. Forgiveness. <laughs> a culture of forgiveness. Yep. A culture of having peace. Or Come helping on. meet each other's needs. Yes. Right. Yes. I think about Acts. I mean, I always go back to Acts too, man. I just love the way they did community. You and me both. Yeah. 44, 47, those verses right there man so it's really cool to be able to see uh that transition happen in your life i knew you before you went to vegas for a little mm -hmm. bit we spent a few minute, moments together and so uh, and then come back and just see you continue to be on fire for jesus yes. and how it's impacting your whole family's been really cool man. amen now uh i know one of the things too uh and i don't know if i knew this about you and i don't even know at this time if you were into music mm -hmm. but i'm assuming so because pre-podcast we was talking about yeah your uh brothers uh teaching you yeah uh music and so um but t tell us about your love for music man and man. so i always got to give a shout out to anthony jones man uh some of y'all knew him as aj and uh man he uh so <clears throat> i don't i couldn't tell you where him and demarco grew the love for music um i just remember when they moved back from from texas um, they moved in with us from as far as what I remember. And um, and I remember just seeing AJ up all night, every night, man, just writing, and then he would record. And, you know, a lot of people, they feel like they got to have some of the nicest equipment to do it. Man, this dude had uh, a stereo, and, and he turned one speaker into a microphone. I don't know how he switched the wires up to do that, but he would rap into this speaker, and everything played back out of this one over here. It was it was it was crazy. You I've know, never, I've never seen anything like that in I, my yeah. life. I still ain't never seen nobody do it. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> but and and the crazy thing about that was I remember asking him how he did it. He said, "Learn it yourself." Like he was one person who was huge on saying he he was not even when I was writing music he would give me the basis of it, and when I asked more about it he would tell me. Go sit with it and spend time with it. Learn it yourself, you know, because I guess at that time, and it's so crazy because he's so young, um, but he he didn't want to hold nobody's hand. It was like, figure it out, you know, type stuff. But I would watch him do all of this stuff day in and day out. And I remember one night I asked my mom, I was like, well, I asked him, I was like, man, can I come in and sit with you, you know, while you do this music? He said, you ain't going to get me in trouble buying Vicky. Go ask her, you know. And so I went and asked mama. And she was like, uh, as long as you get up for school in the morning, you know. And so I sat in there with him, and for hours I fell asleep, like on the floor next to him, you know, looking and watching him do this stuff. And um, that's just the beginning stage. But throughout the years, man, I just started doing more music with him. I'll never forget one of those times he wrote a verse for me. And uh, this is how I really started writing for myself. Um, he wrote a verse for me, and when I didn't rap it how he wrote it, He's like, nah, bro, get out of here. He's like, <laughs> he's like, go write your own stuff, you know, type stuff. He was really, he was really serious about music. He didn't want it to sound trash or none of that, you yeah. know. So that's where it began. Um, I was, I was twelve years old. That's cool. Now, um, you know, we 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 always hear people talk about bars, mm -hmm. right? And so, explain to people in Guthrie, America, what a bar is, please. Okay, so a bar is just a line, you know. So. Um, um, so one of my first, first songs, um, was called Lifestyle. I said in 2012, I felt God tugging at my heart. That's one bar. Um, never knew that that was the beginning of a new start. That's two. Okay. So gotcha. like, that's how your bars go. So, I mean, for, for some of us who may not understand, like, so it could be like, you could call them sentences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> sentences. Yeah. yeah. So it's like. And so when they say, uh, 
So when they talk about sixteen bars, mm-hmm. is that the, a paragraph? Like, is that yeah, kind of how you be, look yeah. at it? Yeah, yeah you look at it be, as a paragraph. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. So do you remember? So is that your first bar? No. What, you just, what was your first bar? Re- so my do you first, remember? So my first bars, um, man. Actually, I I wrote the I freestyled my verse. I was twelve. And I don't remember the verse, um, but it's funny because we got family that still uh, that still would just randomly put this in like a group chat or something like that. And I had wrote the hook, and my cousin Courtney, um, my Letha's daughter, um, she sings. She got a beautiful voice, and it's like one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. And like <laughs> the part that they all laugh about is because. Is like that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so, so everybody laugh about that, and yeah. and it was so crazy, man. Because when my mom really started seeing me get into that stuff, she would take the cassette tapes, and I think she let the family in Chicago listen to it and stuff like that. And it was like it was crazy, man, because it's like she she really saw the love that I had for music. Yeah. And um and she really started to get behind me and support in those areas too, you know. Yeah. And um, it was really a, an escape for me, man. Like a lot of my cousins had sports. I played sports, but I can care less about sports. Yeah. You know, if it if it intervened with music, I'd rather do music. You gotcha. know. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. No, that's really cool, man. Uh, yeah, I had I had to put that in there, man. Yeah. Uh, thinking about music though, like. Are, were you around when, uh, like, the 89ers pray would have, like, the Langston bands, mm-hmm. Douglas, the high school bands, yes. and all those would come yes. come out? What, like, what part of your life was, like, 89ers for you? Was that a big deal? Because it was like a yeah. family reunion for us. Yeah, that's how it was for us. And I'll never forget. It, took, it literally took up more of Guthrie than it does now. Oh, yeah. You know? And so, like, 1st Street, 2nd Street would be, you know, packed down there. Yeah. Um, and that's where all of our family met up, you know, because um, that's where a lot of our family was. And so we all meet up down there. It used to crack me up, go down to the city, and we got to get our outfits and everything together. Yeah, you man. Know, get a fresh haircut. You yeah. Know? And, uh, man, 89ers was a big deal. It was so big, man. I, Just for the state, real. I mean, people was coming from everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, it was, it was that time when, like, we knew people were coming back home. Yes. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man. And it, and it was some of the best memories that you could ever have, you know, the some of the best cookouts that you could ever have, you know, um, watching family play spades and dominoes, you know, music blasting out the cars, you know. And one thing, and my wife would tell you this, I talk about it all the time, the number one thing that I miss the most is whenever, you know, those times are going and you driving through Guthrie and you seeing uh, – each family that's representative of Guthrie, yeah, like they houses is jam packed with yeah. cars and yes. families out in yes. front. Yes. You know, you pulling up, saying what's up to everybody. Yes. You can say hi to everybody at once. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, man, I miss that culture to be honest um, about Guthrie. And I would tell them, Dominique, when we moved back, I was like, what happened? Yeah. You know, and I remember talking to you about it. You said, you said when I came back, I said, what happened? Yeah, man. You know, I was driving down the streets of uh, the Div- division one night late, and it was empty. Yeah. And it was like a Friday or Saturday. Yeah. You know, and I was like, what? Yeah. Where are the kids? Like, where are they hanging out at? Because yeah. that's the way we did it. <laughs> like, it was like you hang out at division, yeah. we hang out at the temple. And those kind of things were like no more. Yeah. So yeah. it was really interesting to see that. And uh, but yeah, things change, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, it's it's a culture that I do miss, though. You know, um, those are those are the things that gave us those memories that we we still talk about to this day. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, tell me some of the things or ways that you kind of see people giving back to the, their community, even if it's not just Guthrie, but just thinking about community in general. What are some things that I've seen you do things where you're, you're giving out food and y'all trying to great give out coats and do those kind of things. What are some ways that you feel people can give back to communities and why is that important to you? Man, um, I would just say whatever need um, that you, cause a lot of times we talking is like, well, I wish Guthrie had this or I wish Guthrie did this and I wish Guthrie had that. I, I'll never forget for me when I first moved back, I remember saying, Lord, I wish, uh, or I said, Lord, um, uh, surround me, you know, with brothers and sisters that that's like mine and that can um, 
um, hold me accountable, you know. Um, and I remember he told me, he said, I've equipped you with everything you need. You got to assemble it, yeah. you know. And so I would say that's the same thing. Whatever we feel that our 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 community needs, he's already given it to us. Yeah. Um, the resources, the 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 people around us, we just got to get out and make those make the conversation happen, um, and 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 basically put our feet where our mouth is. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, what does it mean when you hear our C choose Guthrie, man? What does that What does that mean to you, and how do you live that out? Man, um, if you're not for your, if you're in a community yourself and you're not for your community, I, I feel like that is definitely part of the problem. Yeah. So when we say choose Guthrie, we definitely gotta. But it goes back to that. We gotta. We gotta. Um, we gotta. We gotta be what our community needs. You know, in order for it to be what what yeah. other people desires, I yeah. guess. I don't yeah, know if that no. makes sense. No, yeah, I think so. I think if, if we're not living it out in our communities, it's never going to happen. Right. I mean, like, if you're not trying to figure out how you can shop here or, you know, serve here or um, or, or just do some of the general – be a part of the parade. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if we're not doing it, it ain't going to never happen. Nah. And so other people aren't going to be able to come in and want to be a part of something that that's not there. Right. So, uh, yeah, no, I definitely see that, man. And – uh, that's what I, I appreciate that about you Amen. and being able to see you do that and, and live that out, not with within just yourself, but just raising your kids that way and all that stuff. Amen. So, man. So, yeah, man, I appreciate you, man. I just wanted to jump on here, yes. share a little bit of your story, man. And uh, so it's good. man. Any parting words? Any last thoughts? Yeah. Before I get out of here, man, big shout out to you, bro. Because like I said, it started. It started. Um Talking with you, it's a, I had a whole lot of ideas. I had a whole lot of um, things that I know that the Lord was trying to birth through me. And I, I'll never forget, like I said, whenever we sit down and had conversations, you'd be like, man, you told me that last time. How come you still ain't started? You know, and once again, it's like you got to put your feet where your mouth is. Yeah. You know, you can't just talk about it. We got to we gotta um, make it happen. And, I mean, the word says it itself. He said, don't just be hearers, but be doers, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, man. Um, that's that's what I'll leave it with. We can't yeah. just be hearers; we got to be doers. Yeah, that's cool, man. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for hitting that play button for another episode of the Guthrie America podcast. Uh, we are on a mission to have every story told of those doing life in our favorite community, and those from here uh, will yours be next. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, choose Guthrie.